Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video on my most requested subject, my blepharoplasty or my eyelid job. I'm going to explain the whole process and the recovery and healing time and let you know if it was worth it. And you definitely need to stay to the end because I'm going to expose a major complication and how you can avoid it. So quickly press that like button and let's get started. So let me go over the reasons why I wanted to have this done. Around 27 years of age, I noticed that my upper eyelid skin had began to get loose and it wouldn't rebound as quickly after putting on eyeshadow. It would stay loose and distended. I also noticed that it was harder to create a winged eyeliner effect and a lot of times that eyeliner would bleed to my upper eyelid. As far as my lower eyelid, I noticed that when I smiled, I would see all these rolls just underneath here all bunching up. When I smiled, the skin under my eyes looked so loose and distended like a rubber band. In the summer of 2018, I went to see Dr. Ray Taban, who is in Beverly Hills. He is an oculoplast, but he specializes in eyes. In fact, I had asked him about other procedures and he doesn't even do lasers. He would refer you out for that. So everyone told me that I was too young to get my eyes done, but Dr. Timban reassured me that he sees patients my age and even younger, and in fact I was a moderate blepharoplasty candidate. He needed to remove extra skin from my upper eyelid and also do a skin pinch on my lower eyelid. He said I didn't really have any fat to remove, although blepharoplasty sometimes does remove fat from your upper or lower eyelid. or it can even reposition the fat. Dr. Taban usually opts to not remove fat from the eyelid because this gives an overly surgical appearance. He started giving me the numbing shots. I gotta say that was the worst part. Like, wow, that was very painful. Um, it felt like the numbing shots you get at the dentist except piercing your eyes. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. It was a piercing pain. But I got through it, and once he started cutting, I felt nothing. I felt pressure, and I felt like a little bit of a push and a pull, but nothing else. Here's some footage. This is not me, but this is some footage of him doing a similar procedure in his office. Take a look. Dr. Taban had me open and shut my eyes and make certain expressions. The reason that Dr. Taban does this surgery under local and not general is because he wants you to be able to move your eyes in the way that you usually move your eyes so that he can know where to take skin and where to leave skin. This leads to the most natural result. I want you guys to share with me in the comments below, would you ever get a blepharoplasty? And if so, would you get your upper eyes done or your lower eyes or both? Time-wise, the whole procedure took about an hour and a half. And here's a video of me after I'm pretty out of it. After the procedure, the staff had me sit down and relax, and then I was free to leave when I felt ready to. And they had told me to get an Uber, but you guys, I don't know why I did this, but I decided that I could just walk back to my hotel room. I get outside, and I realize that my eyes have been dilated. So I see nothing except for something very close up to me. It is by the grace of God that I did not get run over by a car. Because I'm walking down Wilshire Boulevard and everything looks like a Monet painting. Don't do that. Uber back, taxi back, don't walk back. Once I got back to my hotel room, I put some ice packs on my eyes that they had given me. And I just laid down and slept for the rest of the afternoon. It was basically sleeping off the local anesthesia. You really can't look at your phone or do anything that requires your vision because your eyesight is blurred for hours afterwards. As far as pain, that evening, I just felt sore. Am I satisfied? I am extremely satisfied, you guys. I wish I hadn't waited. I can see my eyeshadow better on my lid. I look more awake. Nobody ever tells me anymore that I look tired, so that's good.
This complication led to my recovery time being extended. About three days after surgery, I noticed that I was actually looking more swollen and my face started to puff up. Look at this photo. I called the doctor's office and they looked at the photos and they agreed I was having some sort of allergic reaction. Well, come to find out, I was allergic to the adhesive in these pads that were used after surgery. This increased my recovery time by days. If you guys aren't sure if you have a medical adhesive allergy, which is a very common allergy, please check on that before you have any type of plastic surgery. Surgery is really not a big deal, and when you think about the expense of getting filler every six to eight months, it really makes a lot more sense to just go ahead and have the problem taken care of with a blepharoplasty. They usually last about 10 to 15 years. That way you're not going into an office and spending, you know, thousands of dollars every year on filler. As far as price, I paid about 7000 maybe 7500 In other states, I've heard of blepharoplasty being less expensive. I've heard of it being four, five, or $6,000. And of course, you don't want to bargain shop. You want to go with the best surgeon you can afford. Sometimes blepharoplasty will be covered by insurance if the skin that is on your upper eyelid hangs down and obscures your sight. So you may want to see if you qualify for insurance covering it. Please like and subscribe and share on your socials. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your support. Love you. See you next time. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you want to be my friend. Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one.